Ronin is far away the most difficult Titan to play optimally in Titanfall 2. Today I'll be showing you how best to apply him in a variety of situations, maximizing damage while minimizing life lost. Let's have a look. First, we're going to cover all of Ronin's relevant statistics on all of his weapons and his abilities. Then we're going to move into how to play him against a variety of different enemies. The lead wall fires 8 pellets per shot, each dealing a maximum of 60 and a minimum of 25 damage, dropping off over range until the pellets disappear entirely. You're almost always going to be killing in one or two shots unless your aim is completely off the mark. The lead wall's got a pretty defined spray pattern and that there's always going to be two rows of four pellets stacked atop one another. When aiming down sights with the lead wall, your spread tightens pretty significantly, making long range one shot kills extremely consistent if you can aim well. Point and shoot, learn to lead your shots, and you've got one of the best anti-pilot weapons in the game hands down. Your defensive ability is sword block, and I've finally gone ahead and tested out the real damage reduction numbers. Using tone as our example here, you'll note that during a standard sword block, we're looking at about a 75% reduction in damage. With sword core active, sword block's damage mitigation increases to 90%. This is enough of a damage mitigation that blocking a full salvo core from tone barely scratches one half of a single health bar of Ronin's. I'll hit on the importance of this ability a lot later on in this video, but just keep these values in mind for now. It's also very important to note that you can phase dash inside of enemy titans, however if you do you will kill yourself, so I don't recommend that. But the really cool thing is if you're holding your sword block up while you phase dash inside of an enemy titan, so you phase dash and then you pull up the sword block in the, in the phase dash and you hold it up, you will actually phase inside of that titan, neither of you will die, and you will be occupying the exact same space as that enemy titan, and then you just kind of, you know, can walk outside of each other and you'll begin clipping normally again. The only downside of this is that you take about 1,850 damage or so, uh, if my memory serves correctly, from doing this maneuver. So, you will hurt yourself pretty significantly by doing it, but it's much better than accidentally killing yourself by phase dashing so make sure that whenever you phase dash you're immediately going into that sword block if you think there's any chance of you dying immediately due to a very very aware enemy titan just standing in the place you're going to come out of that phase dash your tactical ability is phase dash pretty self-explanatory you can use it to escape danger or to travel through titans that are blocking your path I personally love combining this ability with electric smoke to create chaos in titan versus titan engagements Using these abilities in concert with Sword Block, I personally really enjoy dropping smoke on an enemy titan, getting behind them with the phase dash, then blocking right in their face as they are slowly whittled away by the electric smoke. Applied perfectly, you can body block them into this AoE damage and put them in a really annoying situation very, very quickly. You can split up teams of enemy titans very, very quickly and easily. You can even drop electric smoke while you're in the middle of a phase dash, so that's very, very important to note as well. If you drop it during the phase dash, it will appear in the real world. It does not get lost like some other projectiles will, so make sure you're using it in this way. Maximally, your electric smoke will deal 1,845 damage, but in reality, you can honestly expect it to do maybe a thousand damage, give or take, uh, when you're using it offensively and someone stands in it for you know the majority of the period. There's not a lot of situations where they're going to take more than that unless your opponent is completely trapped or just not paying attention. If you use the Temporal Anomaly Titan Kit uh, to buff up your phase dash, the recharge time of the phase dash is reduced by about 30%. This is honestly a personal favorite of mine. It's what I usually run on my Ronin. As a separate note, it's possible for you to completely ignore the damage from enemy battery poles when you're playing as Ronin. This is honestly an advanced technique, but when an enemy pilot is rodeoing you, after a while, you'll get a feel for when they're going to pull a battery from you after beginning a rodeo. If you phase dash at the correct moment, you're going to be invincible at the moment damage would be applied to your titan, meaning that they're pulling a battery from you without dealing any damage to you. You can then easily turn around, clean that pilot up, and collect the battery that he's just generated out of thin air, 
and you're going to end up in a better position than you were previously. You're going to heal your Titan up, you're going to get a shield, you're going to charge your Sword Core by 20%, all for free, just because you used your Phase Dash at the correct moment. It's really amazing when it works out perfectly. For Ordnance, you've got the Arc Wave. This deals 75 damage to pilots, buffed up to 100 if used during Sword Core. In similar fashion, the Arc Wave deals 1000 damage to Titans normally, and is increased significantly during Sword Core. Which is, unfortunately, even with the damage buff in Sword Core, not quite enough to one-shot a Doomed Titan. This applies the same effects to your target as an Arc Grenade. Their movement and turning speeds are slowed significantly, and their vision is hampered briefly as well. Personally, I don't use this against pilots unless I absolutely have to. And versus titans, I try to get some damage in from some other sources before I use the arc wave. Reason being is that I want to make sure that my presence is known before slowing their turn speed, so that way I have the maximum amount of time to leverage an advantage. Leading off with an arc wave means that for, I don't know, just throwing a number out there, half of the time that it's slowing their aim and just, uh, uh, you know, doing the crowd control effects on them, you're going to actually be waiting for ping and for their puny human reaction times to kick in before they start to even turn around. So for half of that time that their turning speed is lowered, they're not even turning anyways, and that's time wasted. It's not much time, but it is one of those little tiny things that you could make better by, you know, sorting someone in the back, getting their attention, making them realize, oh crap, Ronan is on me, and then you use your arc wave to slow down that turn speed so they cannot turn around to face you as easily. That seems like just a simple change you can make that may, in a lot of situations, ever so slightly improve your percentage chance of winning a fight. Let's move along to playstyle. Generally, Ronan is a great early game titan. In public lobbies, he's an absolute nightmare for pilots to deal with, so do whatever you can in the first minute of a match to farm as many minions and pilot as you can without dying. If you're playing a game mode like CTF, go for an early cap. If you're playing hardpoint, then just try to get an early hardpoint, you know? It's that simple. Play your objective in whatever mode that you're in. Try to get your titan as quick as you possibly can, and drop your Ronin as soon as you can. Once you do drop Ronin fast, the easiest thing for you to do is just to kill the crap out of their pilots. If you're playing a minion based game mode like Attrition or Bounty Hunt, your job at this point is to kill pilots only. Leave the minions to your teammates so they can farm up their own titans. If you're too greedy here and you kill too many minions for yourself, all you're doing is slowing down your titan backup that's going to be so desperately important to you within the next one to two minutes of the match. No matter how fun it is for you to slice up a group of four stalkers with one swing of your sword, consider that it may be the incorrect play if you've got a friendly pilot nearby trying to farm them to get a titan of his own. A lot of the time, though, you're going to just end up hacking everything on your path up, which is fine. Just remember that your teammates need to build their titans, too, is all I'm going to say. Versus pilots, shotgun and melee are your best friends. Arcwave, on the other hand, is something I barely use unless there's pilots in a hallway or a cave, and I just feel like taking a stab in the dark at getting a hit off on them. It's not something that you ever should focus on hitting pilots with. If you don't see pilots and you're not sure where they might be spawning, don't be a dummy and just stand there with your shotgun at the ready. Get into sword blocks so you take less damage from the random charge rifles and other spam that is bound to be coming your way very soon. If you miss a kill because your shotgun isn't ready right away, it honestly doesn't really matter. That enemy pilot is probably so concerned with dealing with you that he's not doing anything else productive towards winning that match. He's not playing the objective. Your team has more free reign over the game, and in that sense, your purpose is still achieved. Ronan is able to just do this better than any other Titan because he's able to block from all directions at the same time, and all that damage is always reduced by the same amount without consuming a resource. Scorch and Ion fail in this regard because they're consuming a resource to block, and they cannot block from all directions. As a Ronin, don't forget to phase dash during any rodeos that you may receive, and to aggressively drop your electric smoke on flags and hard points if you're ever in a position to do that as well. Before I move on, I'm going to be annoying, and I'm going to keep on saying this. Please, use your sword block, like, a lot. Constantly. 
you should be sword blocking pretty much 100% of the time that you aren't trying to either cover ground quickly or actively kill something. I mean, sure, if you're on your own friendly half of the map and you know there's no one there, fine, you don't have to sword block. But come on, like, just use it often, as often as you can stand to use it, and then go a little more than that. Your life total is absolutely crucial when using this Titan. Do everything in your power to keep it as high as possible. Stay in your sword block. Don't get complacent. Once enemy titans start to drop, things get a little more muddled. Gorilla attacks with your shotgun are usually pretty effective. As long as you keep track of the abilities your opponent has available, you keep track of their cooldowns, and you do everything within your power to avoid taking damage from them as much as you reasonably can. Trading one for one on damage as a Ronin is a huge net loss for you. Be passive with your sword block until you have an opportunity to trade up and get a nice burst of damage in safely. Position yourself with friendly pilots or titans nearby and do your best to attract their attention while using sword block. Your goal in most situations is actually not even to deal much damage. Your goal is to be annoying and punish bad positioning. Your goal is oftentimes to create panic. For example, here is a hypothetical situation for you. Let's say that you're in a one versus one versus another Titan, and you've got a few pilots nearby with anti-Titan weapons ready. If you sit there and sword block while the enemy Titan lays into you, chances are that a full gamut of abilities from them are barely even going to get through one bar of your own health. During the time it takes them to dump all their abilities into you, your friendly pilots can work a significant portion of that Titan's health down in no time at all. Once your target realizes that he's taking damage from your teammates and not from you, they're already pretty screwed. They have some impossible decisions that they have to make to get themselves out of this situation. Once they are in the process of reloading, this is your chance to unload your shotgun, melee them, ordnance them with your arc wave with impunity, and have total freedom to either engage in round two of the fight or to disengage entirely if you don't feel like you're going to be able to kill that titan off effectively. No matter what happens here, you're coming out ahead while only taking minor damage yourself. If these two pilots in your team happen to be friendly titans instead, as they usually are, this power of Ronin's is multiplied. The point that I'm trying to make here is that Ronin is amazing at drawing aggro. His power is that people have to focus on him, and if they don't focus on him, they're screwed. If they do focus on him, in a lot of situations, they're still screwed as long as you have the team to back you up. People see Ronin. People hate Ronin. People want kill Ronin. Everybody hates Ronin. Use this to your advantage by spending a lot of time in sword block while just walking towards your target. They've either got to stop shooting you or waste ammo by trying. The better your opponents are, the more you can open them up and metagame them. You can get in their head and really screw with them. If they see what you're doing and try to hold back on shooting, you can let go of block really quickly and send a shotgun blast their way before going right back into sword block. Just taunt them ever so slightly make them really fear you. All you've got to do is grab their attention, then just chill in sword block and wait for your opportunity to strike. Sometimes that opportunity will never come. Sometimes everyone is going to be so caught in tunnel vision trying to kill you that they're going to miss the four other titans barreling towards them in LTS and lose spectacularly. Sure, it may feel bad to do exactly zero points of damage and have no titan kills, but it doesn't matter if your team team won the round, right? If, if you lose your Ronin from sword blocking like five different Titans while your team just walks in and steamrolls them, you're doing your job perfectly. That's all you need to do. Honestly, a lot of the time you should be using your sword core in situations like this to further amplify the damage mitigation of your sword block. Plus, you get your dashes back much more rapidly so you can really get in your opponent's face and make them sweat. You honestly, when you're using sword block this much, you might only get one or two or three swings out of your sword core when you use it in the way that I feel is correct, but let's be honest, that's pretty fine, isn't it? Each swing does 2,000 points of damage. That's competitive with a Scorch Flame core or a North Star Flight core, and in some cases it's even competitive with Ion's laser core if you're not hitting like 100% of that laser core's capacity on somebody. On the generous end, you're able to out-damage every other core ability in the game, except maybe smart core sometimes, maybe? But, eh, whatever, right? 
the most important thing with Ronin is to just not get greedy on the damage that you're dealing. Take what you can get, but the most important thing is to mitigate the damage you're receiving, so when it's time to deal out the damage, you've got the armor left on your Titan to make it happen. Before I release you today, let's take a brief look at Ronin's kits and what your best options are. As per usual, I'm just going to run down the list and give you my best attempt at a rapid fire yes or no answer and a quick blurb as to why I made that decision. First up, Assault Ship. Emphatically, no. Drive your Titan, for Pete's sake. There's no point in dropping a light Titan like Ronin and then leaving him to the dogs. Just don't do that, please. Please don't. Stealth Auto Eject. Again, this is an emphatic no. Despite the fact that you're going to be positioned very aggressively with Ronin, you're lowering your overall health total here, which makes you much less of a threat on the battlefield. If you're in a position where termination is inevitable, consider using Phase Dash to get away, manually ejecting before you're doomed, or just never getting yourself in that situation to begin with. Turbo Engine is also a no for me, actually. Maybe I should put it in the maybe tier, but I mean, I'll leave it up to you. Initially, one might think that this is the most logical kit for the most in-your-face titan in the game, but there's an underlying mechanic here that you probably don't know and you really ought to. When using three dashes on your titan, each individual dash that you have recharges much more slowly than if you just had two dashes. So this kit enables a big burst of speed if you use all three dashes in quick succession, but you're honestly just tapped out after that, and you're actually going to struggle to maintain close range proximity to your target in an extended fight. This is really critical when using sword block as much as I'm recommending that you do, so it's a no-go, honestly. Overcore is actually very much so a yes. I personally don't use this much on Ronin, but Swordcore is way more stellar than most people thought at first glance, myself definitely included. Like, I was singing the death of Swordcore for the first month or so this game came out, until I kept playing Ronin, and I really figured out how I'm supposed to play him, and now I realize the strength of Swordcore and what it's really capable of and what you're supposed to do with it, and I wish I could be in Swordcore as much as possible, so Overcore is a great way of letting you do that. Combine this with a battery boost and your pilot kit, you're going to be bringing a fresh Ronin into the fight at 50% core charge with smoke already prepped and ready to go. More sword cores is a great thing for Ronin, and this is absolutely a valid and good way to play Ronin once you spend lots of time learning how to maximize your core. Nuclear Ejection. This is a maybe, I guess, but I honestly want to put it in the no tier. I mean, it's not bad. You can catch people off guard, kill their titan, and drop a new ronin instantly for free if everything goes perfectly for you. If you can manage to pull this off on a bounty titan, then more power to you. But honestly, when people see ronin, they're already doing everything in their power to run away from you. Remember, everybody hates ronin. They're going to be able to get away from a nuclear ejection 9 times out of 10, so why not just buff your base kit and work for your kills instead of trying to chase people out and cheese them with a nuke? Counter Ready. This is an absolute emphatic yes. This is my go-to kit for Ronin. It gives me a lot of flexibility no matter what sort of foe I'm up against. Versus pilots, well, I can shoo them away if I use my uh, electric smoke and they, you know, I don't want to rodeo and my phase dash is on cooldown. Then yeah, I can use smoke like with its intended usage. Cool, it, smoke does its job. Amazing. But in addition to this, you can lock down objectives like flags, so the enemy team absolutely cannot interact with them for long periods of time. Versus Titans, it's deadly for reasons I've already talked about and shown numerous times throughout the clips here. I strongly recommend that you try this one out. It adds so much damage and offensive utility to Ronin that it's absurd. You can even use it defensively to break line of sight and use it as just a, a ghetto piece of cover if you absolutely need to. It's just so flexible. As for your Ronin specific kits, we're actually still pretty flexible, which is actually very great. First up, we have Ricochet Rounds. If you're playing CTF, or you're just trying to drop a super early Ronin in general, Ricochet Rounds are honestly where it's at. They pretty much guarantee that you're going to be murdering lots of pilots with great ease. Also, I've seen a handful of reports that you can use Ricochet Rounds to clear rodeos off your own back. 
Personally, I don't abuse this, as I run other Titan kits 99% of the time, and I would rather use the phase dash technique for free batteries anyways. Plus, I'm running double electric smoke, so I'm going to have some method of dealing with rodeos. Ricochet rounds is not a game breaker for me in that sense. Thunderstorm gives you two charges of arc wave and is honestly just plain good. You're definitely trying to be very aggressive and a damage focused Ronin with this kit, so expect to die a little more often while trying to trade up on enemy titans. You could potentially use it as a long range poking tool, but you've got to expose yourself for such a long period of time that I'm not sure the damage is really worth it. It's a solid choice though, not what I personally reach for, and even though I'm speaking a little bit of gloom and doom, most people do seem to love it, so I would recommend giving it a try and see if you're not one of them. Temporal Anomaly speeds up the cooldown of your phase dash by about 30%. Pretty cut and dry. This is my go-to as Ronin. It patches up the fact that I don't have a third dash, while giving me a more consistent option to either get in on opponents, run away from a bad fight, or just move around the map more quickly in general. I strongly recommend this one, even though the initial benefits may not seem so great. Highlander is honestly something that I have not experimented with much at this point, and I'm trying really hard to not just flat out say it's hilariously bad. I'll just say this. You need to get the last hit on an enemy titan in order to get the sword core duration bonus from this kit. But if you're good at using the double electric smoke, then setting up these last blows isn't too far out of the question, I guess? Anyways, back to reality. Our last kit is Phase Reflex. This gives you a free, long duration phase shift when you enter the Doom State. Luckily, it doesn't force an ejection or anything stupid like that. It's just a momentary reprieve to reposition yourself or get out of dodge. All I gotta say here is that I think the trend of combining it with nuclear ejection is a bad one. Ronin deserves so much better than to be simply an empty vessel that you throw away to try to get that sweet nuclear ejection kill feed to post on Reddit. Anyways everyone, congrats on making it through this slog. We're finally done. If you've learned nothing else from this video, here's what I want you to take away, and I'm sure that you've already taken this one away. Never underestimate Sword Block. It's the most powerful part of Ronin's kit, and the better you get at leveraging its strengths, the more imposing of a threat you're going to become on the frontier. Remember that your core ability is meant to be a buff ability, not an all-out damaging one. Remember that you got shades of Titanfall 1's dash core, damage core, and shield core all rolled into one super core when you're activating your sword core. Use your instincts from Titanfall 1 here to apply the best of all three with your improved dashes, buff damage, and buffed sword block respectively. As always, if you've got any questions or tips on things not covered here, be sure to leave a comment down below and to keep the discussion going. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.